Welcome back to Brick by Brick. Today we're going to be going through some of my Lego investing tips from someone who has done it for almost a decade investing in Lego and some of the things I've learned along the way. So this is an example of a set that I think is usually a safe, uh, pretty great investment. Here's another one. And the reason that this is generally a pretty good investment is because it is a Lego Star Wars battle pack. So that's good for a couple of reasons. For one, it's got the Lego Star Wars theme. Generally, Lego Star Wars is a pretty safe, reliable investment. It may not do amazingly well, but it probably won't do terribly well. I mean, it probably won't do terribly, but it'll probably be an average, above average investment, which is sometimes pretty good because that way you don't have to run the risk of having a set that just drops in value or doesn't end up going up as much as you were hoping. But generally, these Lego Star Wars battle packs are able to easily double or triple in value within a couple years after they've retired. So they can be a great addition to your investing collection. Uh, this one in particular is the Lego Sith Troopers Battle Pack. It has 105 pieces and it is set number 75266. So part of the reason people love collecting these and are willing to pay a premium for them after they retire is that it comes with a bunch of these similar minifigures. In this case, we have the three Sith Troopers and then the officer figure. And people really love collecting these Stormtrooper kind of figures and making large collections of them. And you're able to get a pretty good bang for your buck if you're willing to buy a Lego Star Wars Battle Pack because you already got four minifigures there and that's one of the best ways to get Lego minifigures. Another reason uh, to invest in Lego Star Wars Battle Packs is because uh, they generally are somewhat depicting of um, like famous builds, small little builds that might be recognizable that people are willing to pay extra for. But mostly what people are paying extra for is the minifigures in the set. And these battle packs have quite a few of them. Lego is currently not really making battle packs much like these two anymore. They, are, they have $15 versions and uh, $20 versions. Uh, each of these, the $20 version looks a little bit more like this. It has the four minifigures and has one or two small builds that come with it, just like in this set. Uh, this one is the Mandalorian Battle Pack. It has 102 pieces in a set number 75267. And it has, in this case, some each very unique minifigures with each of the uh, Mandalorian figures looking pretty different, which is pretty cool. And I have a couple of these in my collection. I have more of the Sith Troopers Battle Packs in my collection, which is unfortunate since this one ended up doing pretty well, doing a little bit better so far after it retired, since it's retired already for both, for both of them. Uh, but it has, both of them have still ended up doing pretty well and will most likely be able to double or even triple investment in another year or so after, since they've been retired for a bit. So those are some of the reasons people really like to invest in LEGO Star Wars Battle Packs, and I would agree with that. Uh, next up, looking for uniqueness in the minifigures that you decide to invest in in the sets is also a really important factor. So for example, this one, this is a Lego Mario set. It comes with, of course, Lego Mario right there, as well as the Bowser Jr. figure, the Goomba right over there. And there's a couple reasons why I bought this set. Uh, for one, it has the Mario character, which is required. This was one of the first, if not the first, Mario set that came out uh, that included the buildable Mario figure that you can uh, use to interact with, with with the rest of the sets. So if people really wanted to interact with the sets, they'd have to buy this set or one of the other two, um, like Luigi or Princess Peach sets. But I thought that since this one was the original Mario character, that it would likely be a better investment once it retired. And uh, according to Brick Economy, it should be retiring soon, which will help increase its value by quite a bit. Generally, after these kind of, well, after most Lego sets retire, they jump up in value by a good margin. And then after that spike in value, they'll continue to go up, but generally not quite as much or as fast as that first jump. After a while, they'll probably eclipse the ROI from that first jump in value, but it might take a little while longer than just a month or two, which is what it would probably take just when, LEGO set, when a LEGO set retires. And another thing to look for is investing in the right LEGO theme. So this is a Lego Lord of the Rings Brickhead set. It's actually under the Brickheads theme, but it depicts Lord of the Rings characters. And uh, I just decided to invest in this one fairly recently. It's not going to be retiring for a while, so if you can get this one on sale, it could be a great addition to your investing collection. Uh, it's got just these two buildable figures, Gandalf the Grey and the Balrog figure, which is the name of the set. 
and um, it's got 348 pieces and I decided to invest in this one because it has two iconic characters and it also is Lord of the Rings theme and the previous Lord of the Rings sets have done amazingly well. They've been incredible investments. So I'm hoping that that trend continues with this one. If you do decide to invest in one of these between the three battle packs, or not battle packs, between the three character packs that LEGO offers, I would probably recommend this one and then the uh, Arwen and Aragorn set, and then the Frodo and the Gollum set. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions, and don't forget to subscribe.